welcome to another episode of the Itsy Bitsy Pet Show. Yay! On WCOBM.TV, this show is live every first and third Thursday of the month from 2 to 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here in Las Vegas. Our product review of the week is to Bailey's. A healthy pet is a happy pet. And this is veterinarian and formulated, pet approved, and it's a full spectrum hemp and CBD line. So we're gonna talk about if your pet suffers with social anxiety and things like getting old and has inflammation and pain, reduces an anxiety it treats seizures and epilepsy, relie relieves pain, helps fight cancer, regulates appetite and helps nausea, non-intoxicating, reduces inflammation. So here we have the small pets, two drops per, per 10 pounds. Then they have the large pets, two drops for every two pounds. And then they have, depending on the size of horse, so as you can see, they have horse, cat, and dog formulas. So the veterinarian, Dr. Robert J. Silver, is who formulated Bailey's, and it's a hemp CBD product for animal health industry, leading the way for hemp to be used as supplement in health and wellness for animals, such as horses, dogs, and cats, and as well as birds and other animals. So again, if you want to get more information, go see them on Instagram at baileycbd or baileycbd.com. That's with the dash. And again, they have small, medium, and large, and they also have soft chew treats. So we went for a ride last night, and when we go for a drive, Dodo, which is Lola, my Chewini, she just barks and whines and she kind of has a small anxiety attack. So we gave her one of these and she was just calm as can be. She kind of did yelp a couple times, but nothing to the extent that she does. I've also been using this on Daisy, my men pin with two broken front legs. And this has been helping her with her social anxiety when we have to leave and put her in her crate. So Please take a look at this, people, before you think about putting them on any kind of prescribed social anxiety or anxiety medication from your veterinarian. Just go to baileycbd.com. When Daisy broke her second leg, the veterinarian told me that she has severe anxiety. And if it gets to a problem, come back and she'll give her um, some kind of anxiety medication. So I asked her, I said, what about CBD? And she quietly said, well, I would try that before you do some kind of medication. So again, reasons. Take a look at this. Veterinarian formulated, pet approved, and it's a full spectrum hemp CBD line. So there's a difference between hemp CBD and THC CBD. So do your homework and uh, thank you so much guys for sponsoring the Itsy Bitsy Pet Show. So let's take a look at these videos on YouTube and find out why pets help people and the reasons behind those health reasons why pets help us live longer, benefit our lives, and more. So take a look at these videos. Whether it be a dog, a cat, or some other creature, interacting with a pet may bring some surprising health benefits. Take Tucker, a vital part of the healthcare team at Boston Children's Hospital. Tucker is one of about a dozen canines at Children's in a program called Paw Prints. They are certified as a therapy dog through a national or local organization. So they've been evaluated, have gone through training and have been evaluated as a therapy dog. Uh, then they apply to our program and we have a pretty lengthy, significant screening process that they have to go through in order to become part of Paw Prince. 
Tucker's job, to bring cheer to patients in pain and emotional distress. Hey, how are you? Tucker, this is... So pat him. Come on, let's say hi to him. with him, honey. Here you go. You'll get the dog come in, and they just light up. Wow! And they smile for the first time, or they'll say something for the first time. It's pretty amazing. One of Tucker's missions today, to give a little girl named India Brainerd an emotional lift. In my body, easy. Uh, no way. There you go. Is he kissing your hands? No huh? way. Kisses already, India. India recently underwent major orthopedic surgery. She's far from home and confined to bed and sometimes experiences significant pain. I'm just, I'm still trying to absorb it right now, but she's clearly very comforted right now with this dog. She's feeling nice. Uh, and, and if you notice, the first thing the dog did was it started to lick her, you know, and it was affectionate and there was touch. And I mean, she's smiling right now. <laughs> she doesn't know about the kisses, I think. Morning. Why does interacting with a pet make people feel good? Research suggests engaging with animals causes the release of a stress reducing chemical called oxytocin. One study found levels of oxytocin especially pronounced when dog owners gazed into the eyes of their pets. <laughs> In addition to the psychological and emotional benefits owning a pet can bring, some studies suggest there could actually be medical benefits as well. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, pets can have a positive effect on blood pressure, cholesterol, and triglyceride levels. Plus, owning a dog often means a built-in opportunity for exercise, which benefits the entire body. Right. And some studies yeah. also show that exposure to cats and dogs early in life reduces the risk for developing allergies. And then there's another benefit to having a pet, which some would argue surpasses all the others. They give you unconditional love. They don't care if you're having a bad hair day. They don't care if you got tubes you sticking like on your what? mouth, your nose, your chest, your throat, your ears. They don't care. They just want to be with the person. In Boston, Massachusetts, Jim Morelli for CNN. As if you needed more reasons to love your little fluff ball, owning a pet can actually solve all your problems. Really, it's science. <laughs>
which means, okay, maybe pets can't solve all your problems, but they can solve a nice chunk of them. So, uh, I'm pretty sure that I just convinced myself to get a pup. Now I just need to figure out that whole tiny city apartment problem. So do you guys have pets? Do you feel like they help you through tough times and keep you healthier? Tell me about it down below or on Twitter at DNews. I'll see you next time. Animals are an important part of our world and our lives. Did you know that the world now has the oldest population it's ever seen? Thanks to public health developments, people are living longer than ever before. Every second, two people celebrate their 60th birthday. That adds up to almost 60 million 60th birthdays every year. More older people also means that animals have a growing and increasingly important role to play in our world. A new report from the International Federation on Aging shows that pets contribute to the physical and mental health of individuals and the well-being of our broader society. Did you know that dog owners are significantly more likely than non-dog owners to stay alive one year after a heart attack? Animals can also help to reduce levels of anxiety, loneliness, and depression. They can even detect seizures before they happen. Animals also provide much-needed physical and emotional support. What's more, with over 230 million smelling sensors, some animals are being trained to sniff out cancer, diabetes, and other chronic diseases in humans. Just having animals in your neighborhood can grow and bring vitality into a community, and animal-friendly environments can contribute to healthy cities. Simply walking a dog every day can help build a community, as well as contribute to your physical and social well-being. And because people with pets may be healthier, some studies have shown that pets can help reduce health care costs. No matter how young or old you are now, we are all in the process of aging, and pets can make this a healthier process, mentally, physically, emotionally, and even economically. Healthy animals make the world a better place. Animals are our passion. We care about their health for the benefit of both animals and humans. Our idea? Prevention works and is better than treatment. For that reason, our mission is to provide innovative and better vaccines to protect animals against infections. We also develop new therapies for the management of chronic diseases. At Böhringer Ingelheim Animal Health, more than 3,000 employees worldwide work every day on the development of new medicines and procedures to keep our animal patients healthy. Every year we invest more than 10% of our net sales to do research at the highest level. That's how we continuously expand our portfolio of innovations in animal health. Livestock is just as important to us as companion animals. Apart from pharmaceutical products for management and vaccines for prevention of diseases, we also develop nutraceuticals for a healthy development. The needs of our customers and in particular of our patients are very important to us. Through our concern and care, we create products serving the needs of animals and ultimately of humans. Our challenges grow daily. Böhringer Ingelheim Animal Health strives to grow with them. We've long known about the ability of dogs to lift our spirits, heal the soul. But tonight, something new, very specific physical ways your four-legged pal can improve your family's health. Here's ABC's Cecilia Vega. What if you could trade everything in your medicine cabinet for this? It's basically a, you know, a furry, four-legged life support system cleverly disguised as a pet. So what I'm telling you, it might be Poodle instead of Prozac, it might be Labrador instead of Lipitor, and it might be Beagle instead of Benicar. An anaconda An instead anaconda. of aspirin. <laughs> Veterinarian Marty Becker wrote a whole book about the healing power of pets. And now, scientists in San Francisco think they too may be onto something. 
They say dust found in homes with dogs may actually make kids less likely to develop asthma. The benefits of having Alex George, Raven, Lightning, and Sheldon the Labradoodle don't end there. So much for an apple a day, Australian researchers discovered people with dogs visit the doctor less. One study found that simply watching this old girl calmed nerves. That connection with animals thought to trigger a drop in chemical levels linked to stress. Have heart disease? You might want to consider getting a cat. Researchers in Minnesota found those who never owned one were 40% more likely to die from a heart attack. The calming purr might actually soothe anxiety. Or it's that close physical contact. That affection connection we share, that's where you get the healing power pets. Fido may be our antidepressant, our cholesterol killer, our lifesaver. Now if only man's best friend could help solve world peace. Who knows? Maybe they can. Cecilia Vega, ABC News, Los Angeles. So it's not just an apple a day. It is a four-legged animal that is your life support, and that is exactly why I'm so glad that we can talk about how pets heal us. Thanks for joining. You're watching the Itsy Bitsy Pet Show. I'm your host, Michelle Davis. We also have Casey Jones from Mooch's Munchies. How you doing, Casey? I'm doing terrific, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. Yes. We I got... feel so bad last time ah, on the show. That's in the past. Okay. Let's talk about okay. the present. Well, I wanted to do a giveaway. And ah. so the giveaway was with uh, Enjoyable, which was my guest last week on the NC Bitsy Pet Show. Um, and so I wanted to go ahead and gift Mooch with his purr. His. His own bowl. See? Yes. Blue. Isn't yes. that awesome? Mooch's Munchies Blue. Yeah. True blue, baby. So what are you guys uh, cooking up today in the kitchen? Well, right now, uh, when I, well, actually when I left, Kelly was making cheesy cluckers. Hi, Kelly. Yep. Hi, Kelly. Did you guys go to First Friday? We did. We were there. Gosh, it's so hot. I know, but oh, this but this God. next one coming up is going to be great. Awesome. So. I love it. Looking forward to it. And hopefully you'll get a chance to come down and see oh, us. Oh, I will. I love, love it. That. You guys are right next to the Arts Factory, kind of tucked away in the back. Yep. Which is cool. And uh, I just love everything that you guys make there. I'm all out, so I need to come by and film a little, like, testimonial. Oh, you're always welcome. Yeah. You know, you know where we live. Yes, I know. Every day. I know. <laughs> I'm going to come. One of these days, I'm going to show up and be like, whoa, wait, hold the phone. She's here? <laughs> no. But let's get to why pets help us. And you watch those videos, it kind of explains a little bit behind all sorts of different things that pets can help us with, from lowering blood pressure to uh, decreasing hypertension to helping us with uh, everything from even diabetes. I mean, dogs and cats and everything help us in so many ways, even service dogs. Um, that it's just amazing how they change us. And so tell us, everybody on Facebook Live, how you doing? Love you all. Tell us what you love about pets. Tell us what your pets help you with and how they change your life. We would love to know. Um, and Kelly brought a great article that you brought with us to yep. talk about. Yeah, so the article is actually uh, something from Huffington, Huffington Post. It goes out to uh, Kayla Matthews as the uh, the writer. She wrote this article in 2014, and it was updated late last year. That talks about nine ways pets improve our lives. And it had some really interesting insights, some of which were very similar to some of the content on the earlier videos. Mm -hmm. um, but there was uh, one of them that really surprised me was the one about helping to reduce the risk of allergies. A lot of people believe that having dogs or cats can actually increase your allergen, you know, the likelihood that you'll have a um, some kind of a reaction. I've never been, I've never had allergies before until I moved to Vegas. And it's funny how all of a sudden allergies hit you out of nowhere. Yep. And you're like, you feel like you're just flat out sick. Right. Like you got a cold or your cough just sounds horrible. Yep. Um, just wheeziness and you cannot breathe. Right, and you can develop them really at any time in your life. Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, yep. and also depending on where you move. There are certain things that I never had an allergy problem before when I was in California that right. I started developing when I came here. Me too, So it's interesting. But uh, yeah, interestingly enough, uh, in studies that were uh, done on this subject, uh, it, it shows that uh, young adults or people who had pets in their home during infancy were approximately 50% less likely to develop allergic reactions to animals. Wow. Now, which is interesting because I've had dogs around me all my life, ever since I was very little. I never had cats around me, and I react to cats. The longer they're around me, the less I can breathe. 
it's huh, weird. So, interesting. Yeah. And there's so many things that I find just helping us with our overall mood. Yes. I find that dogs help me sleep better. I don't know why. When the dogs are in the bed, I just kind of feel, I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. Well, you ever heard the, the, the term a three dog night, right? right? So, you know, in the winter, Kelly and I always laugh about this because the dogs will want to climb in bed with us. And when it's cold, it's like, oh, it's a three dog night. And they right? all, they all yeah. come in and pile around you. And you get that feeling of being part of the pack. Yep. You know. So. Being a part of the wolf pack. And that's what's super important is is finding that connection with your dogs and also with your significant other. And if you don't, then just having that pack with you and that animal is so important. Um, you know, dogs know exactly how you feel. They know when you're sad. They know when you're in pain. Um, they feel it themselves. And there's so many things that we can learn. For me, is patience and and that is such a virtue that I've needed to learn through these years of having a min pin with two broken front legs has definitely been a learning experience that I can't tell you enough. Um, but I think for me, ultimately, and I know this goes for men just as well as women, is that if you don't have a child, and it could be for so many different reasons, but that pet fills such a void of not having a child that it, I mean that's why everyone says they're my fur babies these are my kids because there's something in our heart that no matter what we just want to love we want to give and I think that is so important to remember and even for like moms or dads when their kids grow up and they move out and they're all lonely Empty I mean nesters. yes yeah. a yeah. pet is exactly what you need Correct. I, I, I completely agree with it. And, and one thing that all people uh, fight with, regardless of if they're popular, not, tall, short, doesn't matter, is loneliness. We all yep. experience it at some point or another. And having a pet can help reduce that factor, that loneliness factor. Um, I think social media actually can make people more lonely. Yes, it can make, give it them a feeling of isolation. FOMA? What is yes. it? Fear of missing out? FOMO? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? I don't know what that well, I've actually had friends who've told me that being on social media has had them feel, they feel isolated to just social media and they don't get any real contact with people. Yes, and that's another thing that pets give us is, yes. is they give us that contact. Yep, that you tactile know? Yep. touch sensation. You want to hug, you want to cuddle, there's your buddy, the best. Yep. Now, for anybody who's ever, who has who's had a dog in their life, you probably can relate to this. If you ever left the house in a hurry, uh, and you forgot, oh, I, let, I forgot this key or that or whatever, and you walk back in and your dogs were so excited to see you and you just saw them like 30 seconds ago. <laughs> well, the late, great George Carlin had a, a, a thing, a, a, a bit that he told about this where he said that dogs only recognize two time references and that's now and forever. So uh, whenever you leave and you come back 30 seconds later, they're like, I thought you were gonna be gone forever and they're just so excited. <laughs> You know, but yeah, but I don't know any person who's that way, but dogs are. I know, are. right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that is so the truth. How many of you out there totally agree? Give us a likes. Please comment, please share, because we love to see you guys in the feed and just talking about animals in general. I think we need to pull up like a background of some puppies and kittens. Can we do that, Scott the Magic Man? My board operator is back. Oh my God, thank God. I felt like I couldn't breathe for a week. <laughs> he was away and now he's back. So we're gonna get some puppies and kittens in the background so we can go, aww. And all will be right with and the world. And all will be well. <laughs> Hey Kelly, how you doing? So if your dog is overweight, you aren't getting enough exercise. That's Absol right. Yep, absolutely so true. Let's talk about exercise a little bit. Okay. Point number six in this article actually says the same thing. They they help make us want to stay healthier. Yes. And one of those ways, especially if you live in an apartment, is being able to take your dog for a walk. Yep. Uh, and uh, dogs are like Kelly said, you know, in her comment, if if you tend to be overweight, your dog will as well. So. Um, utilize that that energy that they bring to uh, want to play and that's something we always seem to forget as we get older too is forgetting to play and don't forget that even dogs that are older need exercise too I mean just sitting around is not going to do them any good there is this dog person or it's a it's okay it's a person his name is Jose Rangel and he is a trainer for people and their dogs oh. it's called paws and boot camp and you meet 
at this park which is off of Rainbow and he sets up these little obstacle courses and you have your dog on a leash that's attached uh, to your hip kind of like a fanny fanny pack. Okay. Remember the fanny pack days? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so yeah, and you do exercises, you work out. It's so much fun. Now I want to talk about if your dog is small and you don't necessarily can take him for a walk, you can always do dog carriers because I love bringing my dogs everywhere even if it's the grocery store um, just anywhere I go I always like to take my dogs because socializing with your dogs is very important you know they get to interact with people people light up it makes your day you get to socialize more with people you get to talk about your animals I mean it's such an easy conversation piece yep. so and of course, smaller and cuter the dog, the better, you know, the more attention you'll get. Yeah. Um, so guys, take note of that. <laughs> um, so this is a fanny, kind of like a fanny pack side holster pack. Okay. okay. So this is great for um, any dogs that basically can just relax. You know, you have those dogs that they have to be on kind of like a flat surface. This is not necessarily a great pack for that because it is kind of flimsy on the bottom. But um, again, depending on how well your dog is, just, you know, relaxing when you're walking around with them, carrying them and stuff. Um, this is a good pack to use. I got this at the Fantastic Swap Meet. This was $30. Oh, cool. Um, this is another pack, which was 45 that I got again at the Fantastic Swap Meet. So this pack is great because I you can wear it behind you like a backpack, but I wore it in front of me like this. Yeah. So Bitsy was able to kind of stick her head out front and um, I put a towel at the bottom. See, there's uh, there's our puppies. Aww. Ah, yay! Eee. Everything's good now. See, this is invisible because it's green. You see that? See how it's invisible? In the yeah, screen? yeah. <laughs> Don't forget your little poop, pooper picker upper bags. That's Definitely. always a plus. Yes. So what if you have maybe uh, a mid-sized dog that's around 15 pounds? This I got at PetSmart. This was a little more pricier. This was $80. This is your everything in one kind of backpack. So it has the hard surface at the bottom. It's got tons of side zippers for your water bottles. Um, and it even has this front pack. So let's say you're carrying them and you're like, all right, you can get out now got this cute little front pack that you can just easily unzip and then they can crawl out and then it has pockets galore which is great so if you want your clickers your potty pads your poop picker upper pads your whatever you name it it's got it so that's terrific this is great um and this is this is top paw now, now keep in mind, none of these are suitable for the 110 pound Great Dane. I don't yeah. think you're going to be carrying them around, although they'd probably let you if, if uh, you could. I'm trying to see the name <laughs> of this company. But again, Fantastic Swap Meet is awesome. Uh, PetSmart is awesome. But yeah, we just want you guys to get out and have fun with your dogs or your cats or any of your animals, gerbils, rabbits, whatever. Just get out and there are so many cool parks and areas in Vegas that are great to go and hang out. For instance, Lake Las Vegas. Ooh, I have not, now, not been out there with dogs yet. I would say don't go out there. Okay. You know why? Why? We went out there and we thought oh, all this grass, we took the dogs and then all of a sudden this car came up to us and they said, hey, um, about 150 feet, if you look, there's a coyote looking at you guys. Ooh. Yeah. So you might want to watch out for wild animals if you do go outside in areas that might have more wildlife. Um, but there are so many great little parks. And where's your favorite place to go? Gosh, uh, I, don't, I can't even remember the last time we went Barks to. Barks Park? Well, Barks Parks, I haven't taken Kelly. our dogs there yet. I have not taken no. our dogs yet there. No, we The we, beer we garden that you get to bring your dogs to. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get a chance to do it. We haven't done it yet, Kelly. Yeah. I know, I know it's bad for it, but we haven't. But we will one of these you days. You guys are busy cooking. Pretty much. Whipping up those moochie munchies. <laughs> That's right. So um, other than that, we're talking about how pets help us and how um, things like living longer yeah. can actually help with people and therapy with pets. Yep. For instance, my better half, Jean, had Aunt Dolly and Aunt Dolly lived all the way to 99. Oh, wow. She had never had a pet in her life. And I actually found this teeny tiny toy black poodle named Tina that was her absolute best friend to the 
day she passed. And um, the difference it made was someone who the, the loneliness, the companionship, the love, the energy, the excitement, the spontaneity, the quality of life was just amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Well, and for those of you out there watching us, give us a like if you can relate to this idea of your dog or your pet giving you unconditional love. It, it, it want to hear more and more about that because it's something they do without us asking for it. Uh, they just do it. Yep. It's just a part of their nature. Yep. And um, of and us being we, a part of their pack. And we were talking before the show about how some people are so cruel to their animals and we're trying to figure out why. And the one thing is, it, it boggles me, is how a pet will, no matter what, come back with yep. that unconditional love. Yep. Um, and there are so many pets out there that need love, so please check out, if you're in Vegas, the NSPCA. There's also the fam the Animal Foundation, um, Connor and Millie's Dog Rescue. Exactly. Yep. Hey, Patricia, how you doing? <laughs> I actually have a gift for you, so next time you come on the show. But, yeah, there are so many great places here in Vegas to be active, to go out with your pets, to have a good time. Um, and, of course, just have a leash of course yes be please, safe please um don't take them anywhere where the heat is way too excruciating something very early in the morning is probably the best yeah um but there are a lot of dog meetups just go to meetup.com yeah las vegas dogs i'm sure you guys socialize with a lot of the pet community with pet scene magazine and stuff we do and and it's and it's a big community and that's another point in this article that's worth mentioning is that Having, having pets draws people to us, draws other people to us, which helps with the loneliness factor, but it also helps us connect with other people in a community of like-minded people. Yep. You could almost think of it like the church of the dog, you know, totally in a sense. Totally possum. Totally possum. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> That's their slogan, by the way, just in case you <laughs> need to know. <laughs> So let's go down the list. We were talking yeah. about um, how they can stabilize your blood pressure, um, literally, I would say animals are the best medicine and you don't need a prescription and it's something where if you're gonna save money on your insurance having an animal I mean they're talking about aquarium therapy yeah. I know people who love birds who just get a kick out of them and for instance my mom wants a dog so bad and my Papa Ron is a veteran who I know he would love having a service dog, but there's just so many things in life that you might have to go around. Like, for instance, the responsibility. Yeah. The poop and the pee. Yep. S the smell. Stuff like that where you kind of have to grit and just bear and grin it. That's right. What do you do with um, doggy doors? And do your dogs go out during when it's hot out and everything like that? They do. We actually have a doggy door that's built into the wall of our house. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things that all the new dogs learn, because we actually have two fosters and then our two, mm -hmm. is learning how to use that dog door. But it's amazing how they'll teach each other. They'll watch right. each other and and they learn how to go out on their own. They know we, we show them where to go. Mm -hmm. And we have a pool also, so we also show them all how to swim so they know how to get out of the pool. Do you have a pool gate around? No, we do no. not. That Which is the reason why the, we take them in and make sure that they can demonstrate how to get out. Right. We That's show them very and important. then they demonstrate it to us. So, especially because we all have, we have small dogs. Yeah. So they have to know how they can get out. And... Um, yeah, so we do that all the time. But yeah, the, there's so many different types of dog doors. You can get uh, w ones that are built, you know, that you can put into a sliding glass door. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, various sizes. You can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get those. They're not too terribly expensive. But it's a great way to, you know, make it possible. If you have a, ho a house where you can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, I've even seen it in some apartments where if you have like a balcony or something where the dog can go in and out and it's okay, then that's a great thing for them to be able to, you know, to have. And let's say, for instance, you and your better half are kind of figuring out and you can't come to terms with like the best solution. The best solution is to hire a professional trainer yes. to come over and give you a free consultation because almost every trainer will give you a free consultation. They come in, you ask them their opinion. And recently, Jean and I just did this where we're moving into a new home. There's no doggy door. The house is huge. We're trying to find the safe way where to put all the little ones. And so he specifically said this is a great area for a doggy door this is a great area where to fence them off in the yard that reassurance alone made me feel like it's okay now to move on with moving because yep. unless my dogs are 
in an area where I know they're safe, they have everything they need, um, then I truly feel like I'm not doing my job as a mom. Right. Yeah. It's almost like shirking a responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the good things on this list that Kelly sent us with the nine ways that pets make us healthy or they're good for us, improve our health, um, is they make us feel supported. When there's times where we feel like life couldn't suck anymore I'll tell you what dogs are the one thing that are gonna make us through those bad days and those are some of the reasons why I truly truly affirm that if anybody needs a little bit of companionship get a dog go to a shelter spend some time with the dogs you can even be a volunteer and you can kind of figure out some of the things that you like quality wise about dogs and other things you know a lot of people are unsure if they've never had one right which is why you know, if looking at rescue op opportunities may be a good way to, to, to give it a try. Absolutely. You know, um, and there are foster yes. homes. They'll yes. give you a chance, and then if it doesn't work out, you know. Um, Connor and Millie's, I love. I do, too. I mean, it's a little dog organization, but it's for little elderly dogs. Yes. Oh, my God, that's so cute. Well, the funny thing is, is they have other dogs, too. They but do. that's what they they're do. known for. And if you ever get a chance to check out their site, it's really worth going. Yeah. For sure. I know that there was the Animal Network Rescue that was on mm -hmm. when I first began. There's so many organizations out there that just take a look at it and see what it is in your life that a pet could help benefit you with. So it doesn't have to necessarily be a dog. It could be a fish. Yeah. It could be a gerbil. It could be, yeah. I saw a hairless guinea pig the other day. What? I wanted it so, it looked like a hippo. <laughs> it looked like a teeny tiny little hippo. I was like, oh my God trying to picture this. I, it was like, please give me a hug. I'm so cold. Please give me a hug. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted it so bad. It's like, here, here's a toupee to put around you. Now you have hair. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but there's so many, there, there's so much joy that, that pets bring us. So we wanted to give shout outs to everyone. Hey, Maria, our Roxy has helped my mother-in-law with her husband passed away. That is so sweet. Love to you and Michael and Roxy and everyone. And uh, hey to Jay. JT. And hey to everyone who is watching us on Facebook Live. We're just having a great time. Jay hey, Kennedy, you know? one yeah. of the two crazy cat ladies is on. Hey, Jay, how are yeah. you? Yeah, we, we need to talk about cats a little bit. Yes, we should. We we want we don't want them to feel left out. No. But I, I'd like to add something that Maria actually wrote. Okay. So, uh, Maria, you brought up a point about um, about Roxy helping your mother-in-law oh, when when she's a Sharpe. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Uh, I used to have uh, a Boston Terrier with my with my ex-wife. Um, his name was Doc, like Doctor Jones, Doc, and uh, cause he always had this real serious sort of look on his face. Was how he got the name. When my ex-wife's mother passed away, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a crier by nature. It's just not something that I do naturally. Um, when I was in theater, I used to be able to do it quite easily, but I've just sort of lost that somehow. But whenever my ex-wife was crying over the loss of her mom, I remember she was sitting on the edge of the bed and she was crying and Doc sat at, the f at her feet and cried with her. And I, I had never seen anything like that before, but it, it taught me something about the connection that D the dogs and animals have to us. When, when they bond with us, they feel our pain. Um, and so there's something really powerful to be said for that. And the other way around. Yes. When my min pin Daisy broke her oh, leg and then two weeks later broke the other one, there was a side of Jean I had never seen before. Yeah. Oh, really? Like a side of compassion yeah. and like motherly love. And he felt so bad for this tiny little animal that he just took it in his arms and just like, he almost started crying. Like I was like, I had never seen this side of you before. Yeah. And um, another thing that pets are just amazing with is that they help us stay positive. Yes. So a lot of people, I feel like when you have a bad day, you know, you try your hardest, but sometimes you can let it out on other people. Yeah. And so I feel like pets, no matter what, they're gonna understand. They're gonna be there for you. What do you want? You want to kiss? You want to wag my tail? You want me to get excited? What do you want? You know, um, dogs know and cats yeah. know when you know you're in a bad mood. But I also feel like 
they are what we need to turn us and put us in a good mood. Yeah. They may not be able to speak our language, but they do understand us. Sometimes more than we understand them. I don't know. When I say walk, my dogs freak out. <laughs> they freak Wanna out. Want to go bye-bye? Ah. Want to go for a ride? <laughs> oh my God, they freak out. <laughs> it's like, shh, don't say that. Shh. Yeah. They know, they know some words. They even know sure. W-A-L-K. Like, yeah. We can't even say that. Because then they know. But they do feel us, yes. and, and that's something. It, 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 there are times when I think people can be very cold with, with each other. They get caught up in their own little world. And when you think about it, especially with us who own dogs, we are their world. Oh, yes. And so, and they let us know it every time we come into the room. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's funny how some people actually put a wall up to people around them, but to a pet, there is no wall. There is no wall. And that is the funniest thing how I'm like, you don't like me? But it's, no, it's not, no, I'm just kidding. But like a lot of people just, you know, they have their guard up, they have their wall up. There's some things about people they're not gonna trust. Animals all the way, which is so, I love that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Is there anything about animals that you absolutely love that, that just changes your life and you want to kind of share it? Please put it out there. I love all the people commenting and- I know. I know we got, we got three new comments and, Hey Judd, how you doing? How's Stereo Love? How's the fam? Sharpay. Oh, Sharpay Pit Bull Mix. Wow. Yeah, she's a pretty girl. She's all black. Oh. She likes to lay on her mama's treadmill when she's not using it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and JT actually brings up another good point here. He says that fostering can be a great way to do some breed research. So if you're actually not sure about a certain breed, you can go to rescues that focus on that specific breed. And um, give them a try. Yeah, ask them questions. I want to yeah. give a shout out also to my trainer, Michael Haley. He has a canine, canine Corso. I think that's what it is. A cane Corso. Cane yeah, Corso they're big, big. Max. He's <clears throat> huge. <laughs> and you know what he said to me the other day? What did he say? He wants to get a female. Oh my. To breed him. I'm like, <laughs> do you know what that means? <laughs> like. Do you know what you're saying? He's like, no, no, no. Max is good. He's well behaved. I'm like, yeah, until uh, uh, until a female comes yeah. around. Yeah, but anyways, and, the, and their puppies are big. They wouldn't even be suitable for these carriers. Can you Mike. imagine the size of animals nowadays? Can like, you imagine the size of the food bill? Imagine the size of their hemorrhage. <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll leave that we'll one. We'll leave there. that one without. Yeah. <laughs> how many How many dogs have you had throughout your life? About nine. Yeah. Yeah, of various kinds, and usually the ones that, that came into my life were already, like when I was a kid, were already about two years old and trained. Uh -huh. So I didn't get to go through the experience of a puppy. Oh, it's hard. Until until we fostered our, our uh, the Chihuahua Neon that we have, and we had her three puppies. Oh. And all three of them, by the way, have all been adopted, but that was my first taste of dealing with little tiny puppies. Yes. And, um, and here's something, I don't know if anybody else out there has experienced this or not with puppies in particular, but, but Kelly always told me that puppies' breath smells like coffee. And I said, I love there's, it. there's they no have way. This smell. And I, I smelled it. And I'm like, it does. It smells like coffee. <laughs> How the heck does that work? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but you guys had the best time ever. We did. Even though you couldn't leave your house ever. <laughs> you had the best time ever, I bet. <laughs> we did. It was good. Oh. Well, let's see. Are we out of time yet? I don't know how much time we have. No, we, we don't still, even we pay attention got, to our time. We still got plenty of time. We got, yeah, we got 15 minutes, so we're good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Barks Park. Barks Park. So if, if you've had a chance or if you've not had a chance to go check out Barks Park. First off, do you like beer? Mm, beer or wine, for that matter? Yes. Okay. Mm. So, yes. Mm-hmm. They do. They do offer beer and wine at Barks Parks, but that's that's for the us. That's for the the two the yes. the, the two legged upright walking animals. That's right. But uh, Barks Parks indoor uh, dog park uh, here in in Vegas. It's actually uh, at. Let me think of the the streets. It just it just uh, stripped away from my brain here. It's uh, Eastern and Pebble. Southeastern and Pebble in Hen I guess in Henderson. We should go there and film. Oh, that would be fun. Bring Kelly. Yes. Bring all the doggies. Oh boy. Give a shout out to my mom. Hey mom. <laughs> How you doing? Talking about dogs. When are you gonna get one? Tell Papa Ron I said hi. <laughs> but yeah, there's so many great places in Vegas that are dog friendly. Um, I know that there is one big dogs. Is it Big Dogs Brewing Company or Yeah, there's a brew um 
there used to be a Big Dog's restaurant in town. I don't know yeah. if, they, if they still exist or not. There's Lazy Dog restaurant, Lazy but I don't dog. know if that's, I haven't been there yet. I don't what's, know if they're. What's your favorite restaurant to take your, your pooches to? Do you guys have a favorite here in Vegas or anywhere in general? We yeah, anywhere know. where you are, do you have a favorite place that's dog friendly that, that welcomes them just like they welcome you? Yes. There's nothing better than actually being able to take your dog anywhere and then oh, them feeling just as welcome. Yep. You know? Um, and I know that there are some dogs that you kind of have to keep an eye on. So, for instance, like Lola's not that friendly. We'll keep her at home. But Bitsy, she she loves everybody. Right. And, and Daisy's got the broken cast right now, so we kind of have to be uh, a little bit careful of where we take her. But Marie gave me a doggy stroller. And all the neighbors came up to me, and they're like, oh, you had a baby? And I'm like... <laughs> Oh my god. Sort of. <laughs> but it's like, what are you going to do when I'm carrying one of these? Yeah. Right? Like, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. I'm not wiping any butts, but I'm picking up the poop pad. Yeah, that's so it's right. The same thing. But, um,. Big Dogs has a dog-friendly patio, so go there. Awesome. Yep. They do have a Bowser beer, too, at Barks Park. That's right. They do offer a it. A Bowser beer? Bowser beer. Yeah, the Bowser beer is a... We actually offer it, too, at, at Mooch's Munchies, but it's a non-alcoholic, non-carbonated brew that's made for really? dogs out of either beef, chicken, or pork broth. What? Yeah, and they put glucosamine in it for their joints, so it's made for dogs. Oh, my God. That's yes. so cool. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. It's fun. Because I would usually go through Starbucks and I'd ask for a puppuccino. Puppuccino. And nothing but whipped cream. And I'm like, they had the worst gas <laughs> ever. <laughs> I won't go back. <laughs> so now I'm going to try that. That probably would, with the Bowser beer. Yep. That is so fun. Yep. So other than that, Mooch's Munchies, I want to talk about how you guys are amazing with all of your treats, um, all the different flavors, varieties. Oh boy, and, we have so um, many. First off, the passion you guys have for your business, the story behind it. Um, he's one of my very first Itsy Bitsy Pet Show interviews, so go back a couple months and go check it out and listen to that. Um, it's an extraordinary story how, you know, Kelly and Casey, which I love the names, um, came together and they just came up with this concept in Cayucas. You know, Casey and Kelly came up with this concept in Cayucas. <laughs> That they were going to have Mooch's Munchies. And it's from the Brown Butter Cookie Company. My mom loves that place. Yes, I do I too. I mean, how can you not love that? I mean, that I line definitely. Through the door. You can tell I love that place. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I would just say you're, you're just, you're um, a happy-go-lucky guy. So it's like no oh, yeah. matter what, there's so many things like you could poke all day long. And I'm like, I don't see it. <laughs> I just see Casey. Aw, thank you. Yeah. Well, Kelly will tell you that I'm not always happy-go-lucky, but the dogs do help keep me in line. That's good. They definitely do. That's good. So. You guys have all sorts of treats from yes. pumpkin yes. to peanut butter yep. to banana yep. to all sorts of, they have little ones, they got big treats, all sorts of stuff. You guys got to stop by their store and and try some samples yes and please and please bring your doggies in it's a dog friendly bakery as long as they keep you on a leash it's that's all right. good it's all possum that's right it's to all totally, totally possum possum totally possum so other than that um you also can catch them at first friday yes by the arts factory and this show is live every first and third thursday of the month i know i kind of got that mixed up last few weeks. I was like, it's every first and third. And now I'm like, it's every second and fourth. No, it's every first <laughs> and third Thursday of the month from 2 to 3 p.m. And um, yeah, go and check out the Itsy Bitsy Pet Show on IG if you want more information. But I hope you guys have enjoyed today's show. Yes, and please do us a favor. If you have an opportunity, put in in your comments any ideas you'd want to see for future shows yeah. or topics and content. That's a good idea. Absolutely. And you know what? I have those gift certificates you guys gave me. I should do, just do like a giveaway for Woo! next month. Giveaways are great. Giveaway! <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Is there anything else we wanted to say? There was the one other one. I skipped around a bit. Helped us stay positive. Yes. It helps with blood Improving self-esteem. Yes. Which I thought was very interesting. People who are pet owners have a more tendency to be extroverted, or if they're a natural introvert, it brings them out of their shell a little bit. Yes. You're 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 an introvert. A little bit, I am. Yeah, really? I know. 
Now, I see, know. I would have never guessed that. I know. Everyone thinks I'm so extroverted, but it's like, no, I do have a little bit of a shyness in me. Like, if I don't know you, I'm going to stay quiet. <laughs> and then once I get to know you, I'm all over the place. There you yeah. go. Yeah. But I love the fact that pets make you go out and do stuff. Um, and be more interactive because they have to socialize just as much as you need to socialize and there's so many opportunities out there to go and just make friends yeah. friends with other people with puppies have your puppies make friends with other puppies right. and uh, like dressing them up right doing their nails doing their hair come on ladies <laughs> you know this is fun accessorize exactly <laughs> There's so many fun things about having a dog I could just be endless with. Um, but <laughs> vicariously, I, I live through them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now, but one thing I would ask, though, and this is something that is also good for those of you who have children and dogs. One thing that I would ask uh, that is a brilliant and important thing to teach your children is the proper way to approach dogs that are on yes. leash. Yes. Uh, because oftentimes when we're doing events, we will see you know children who will just rambunctiously run up to a dog. Yes. Just keep in mind that the dog is smaller than us most of the time, and just think about what it would be like for somebody to run at you, even if they seemed happy. If you didn't know them, you you'd want to be like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Teach your children how to approach a dog properly, and it will be a, a good safety tip for them, and it will also help develop better relationships with the dogs that you meet. Right. I find a lot of the times when dogs are barking, don't be scared. They're just saying hi. That's right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> obviously, if they're showing their teeth and, you know, drool is coming out of their mouth, that might be another scenario. It might want to back up a little bit, you know. But um, for the most part, just, you know, stick out your hand. Don't be afraid to say hi. My dogs bark up a storm, and I'm like, they're just saying hi. Yeah. They're just saying hi. They have a lot to say. That's right. <laughs> so give some love to your poochies and your kitties and all of your animals out there. And I think next month we should talk more about cats. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can uh, get the two crazy cat ladies to come yes. and talk with us. There's a cat adoption place off of Eastern Ooh. at the PetSmart. Okay. So it is an amazing place. Um, and I actually am going to go film there. So, yeah, I'll air that next uh, next week, we'll let's see next month on the show. Yeah. And then from a, from a perspective of Mooch's Munchies, we're also at the Silverton Casino on Sundays. We do a farmers market out there. It's a beautiful venue. Come out there and see us. You can come out there and see us from nine to three. Bring your dogs um, as long as it isn't too hot. The ground isn't too hot, or if you're willing to carry them. Doggy stroller. Or doggy stroller carrier. Yeah, unless you have a cane course. I have like you know a Kiki dog stroller song I can do. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> People are like, what is she? Anyway. <laughs> now, now you'll have to show me that. I know. You come and see us. I'm going to make you a do it A doggy stroller kiki one. <laughs> Can people order Mooch's Munchies online? They can at hey. the moochesmunchies.com. There you go. Pretty pretty easy. All right, everyone. Well, this was a fun show. It, it always is. High five. I, right here. Right. Kelly, you need to come on the show. Yes. Just and maybe once. D at least once. Just once. And to all the dogs out there that we love and all the people we love as much, have a great day today. You too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.